Hello and welcome back to Small Room Audio. Today we're going to talk about Italy. Italy is a fantastic place, isn't it? In fact, it's one of our favourite places to go on holiday. It's so romantic, there's all the wonderful lakes, the mountains, the seaside resorts, um, volcanoes, um, of course culture as well, you know, Florence, Rome, it's an absolutely wonderful place. And that of course expands out to Italy's products. Not only do they make fantastic wine, they also make amazing cars, and of course, fantastic hi-fi. And the thing that's shared across all of these things is the romantic notion, the desirability, and the quality of those products. When you buy an item from Italy, rarely do you buy it with your head, maybe if you were buying it from Germany, stereotypically, um, but you're buying it with your heart, and you're really loving and wanting and desiring that item. And the same goes for hi-fi, right? When you think about Italian brands, you've got Pathos or Unison Research or uh, Sonus Faber. Today, we're looking at an Italian product and one that is equally as desirable, beautiful, romantic, and wonderful. And that is the Synthesis A50 Taurus. A tube amplifier with 50 watts of power that doesn't just play music, it moves the soul. This is a really top quality amplifier and I'm gonna enjoy this one. Welcome along. So before we get into the amplifier itself and do a bit of a tour, let's talk about Synthesis as a company because you may not have heard about them. Synthesis, or the full title, Synthesis Art in Music, uh, is a company based in Italy that's been around since 1992. It was founded by a gentleman called Luigi Lorenzon, and his father actually founded and ran a uh, transformer company. So Luigi has a lot of uh, background in how to make a really good transformer, and one that sounded really good. And since 1992, for the last 28 years, he has been making top quality, hand-built products out of Italy. And now, imported by Henley Audio, who were very kind enough to send me this amplifier to try out, they are available in the UK from an official stockist. And so, big thank you to Henley. If you don't know Henley Audio, by the way, they're one of the UK's leading uh, providers of hi-fi equipment, and they don't do all the bog standard stuff that you can find everywhere else. They've got a huge showroom in Oxfordshire, and they've got fantastic products, including now, of course, Synthesis, but they've got other things like Hi-Fi Rose and you know, loads of really cool, high-quality stuff. So check them out. Um, and again, thank you guys for sending me this. This has been a fantastic bit of fun to listen to this wonderful amplifier. Now, what do you get here? Well, it's a 50 watt tube amplifier. Uh, it's powered by KT88 tubes. And in the preamplifier section, you have um, a 12 AX7. And also uh, you have, let me look it up. I think it's the ECC um, 99, yes, a 12 BH7. So that's uh, two ECC 83s, 12 AX7s and two ECC 99s, 12 BH7s. The uh, 12 AX7s are in the input stage and the 12 BH7s are in the driver stage. Now they're quite commonly used um, tubes in the preamp stage and that's because they sound really good in the preamp stage and it creates a fantastic 3D effect and we'll talk more about that later. And of course, KT88 tubes are also world renowned for being fantastic power tubes that are very dynamic and give you a level of a level of refinement but there's also quite a lot of kick and grunt um, and that certainly is what this tube amplifier will give you as well. Taking a tour around it, well it is an integrated amplifier so as I said the preamp and the power stage is there but you also get a digital stage with a USB input and a SPDIF input as well and that DAC stage is quite something. Normally on an integrated amplifier you will get a, a DAC um, whether it's a good DAC or not, normally you'd say not, and you'd have to get an external DAC to go with it, but the DAC here is very, very good. It's a dual mono Wolfson DAC, and um, I don't know, it's, it's just perfectly suited to the sound of the amplifier. It hasn't just been thrown in without any thought. They've really picked something which works very well with the tube sound that this outputs. So, um, yeah, very impressed with that. And I wouldn't have thought, unless you want to go into multiple thousands of pounds worth of spend, you would be able to better the synergy and the quality of the DAC that is included, which means, of course, you're saving money, 
because you might need to, because this amplifier is of course not cheap. It retails in the UK for £6,199. This is high-end hi-fi. However, with that DAC in there, you might be saying, well, I don't need an external DAC, so I don't need to pay a couple of grand for that. Um, everything is built in, which makes it then a better value proposition. You have uh, analog inputs on the back, no balanced here, and of course your, your power uh, cable going into the back as well. So it is relatively straightforward in terms of inputs and connections, but it's all done really well with, again, bog standard looking speaker, uh, binding post on the back, but very nicely put together. Everything here speaks quality. Everything here has been thought about, and that really does translate to a quality of sound. Moving around to the front of the, um, oh, actually, before we do the front, let's just talk about one thing that is a bit of a negative, which is quite shared with a lot of tube amplifiers, and that's the weight of this thing. This weighs 35 kilograms. That's given me a bad back moving around, which is why I'm showing pictures when I'm talking about the back of the amplifier, because to try and move this around is, um, well, let's just say it's difficult rather than, um, you know, easy. It is incredibly heavy. So once you've got it in place, you might want to leave it in place. Um, also looks of it, let's just talk about the looks. I mean, I wouldn't say it's got that Italian look where it's kind of, oh, it's intrinsically beautiful, but it's very nicely finished. You've got the cage on the front here, which is actually screwed down on the side with two uh, screws either side. I won't take it off. I'll show you the pictures of what it looks inside with the tubes. Um, but it's, it's a nice rounded affair. It, this gives good protection, this grill, from the heat of the tubes. Uh, a lot of the time when you get a cage over the tubes, uh, it can heat up and you could probably fry an egg on it. Not so much with this, which is good if you've got pets and kids. Um, and at the back, you've got your transformer section, which is incredibly quiet for a tube amplifier. You don't get any hum from the seated position, even quite close uh, from the listening position, because I listen probably about six feet away from this, and there's no hum that I can hear, which is audible from the transformers, which is excellent. Um, if I turn it on now, you might be able to see the, the light come on when I flick the switch, if I can find it at the back here. There we go. So just down there, you can see the orange light has come on. Now, this is in standby mode. I was expecting when you press the standby mode, you might get a green light to say it's come on or it's warming up. So let's press it and see if that happens. No, it, it doesn't. So the orange light goes off and there's no light, which means it's on. I didn't say Italian products were logical. I just said they were very good and moved the heart. Uh, yeah, the heart, not the head. The head says, show me a green light. Standby is orange. The head says, where is it? The heart says, doesn't matter because even if it's got no light when it's on, you can just about see the tubes glow when it gets into gear. And of course, you do have a light down here, which is showing at the moment that it's heating up because it's going from left to right. And then, oh, it's heated up. Now you can change the sources along here. I've got it into USB DAC mode at the moment. Um, of course, you can change it to any of the um, analog um, outputs as well. You can also use this as a preamp into a power amp if you wish to do so. Um, I don't know why you would necessarily, but you can, and it also sounds very good. I have tried that uh, into my line magnetic tube amp, which is behind me. I don't know if you're seeing this, um, and we'll talk about the comparison between the two later on, because they're very similarly um, sort of powered in the sense that they both come from tube amps and they both have about 50 watts. Back to the Taurus. So the A50 Taurus, you have on the front here a nice bit of machined, um, I guess it's aluminium or, or aluminum if you're in America, but it's, it's very nicely finished and a great big volume knob on the front, uh, which you can use the, uh, the pinky finger to twizzle around or indeed the, um, the uh, quite well built and robust um, remote control that comes with it as well. The remote control is quite basic. There's not loads of buttons on it, but it's the buttons you want to use. It feels nice in the hand, it's nice and weighty. And the design is much like the amp. It's kind of chunky and robust, but at the same time has a certain style and flair to it compared to quite a few amplifier uh, remote controls that I've used, which feel like they've come out of a cracker and uh, are made out of cheapy plastic. So it's very straightforward. You've got 
your source selection, uh, you can change it to preamp, you can have analog or digital, and you've got your on button and then all of the tubes start heating up. And of course, you can then start listening to music. But before you do, and one of the common complaints that people have of uh, tube amplifiers is the amount of noise that they output through the speakers because the tubes themselves can be quite noisy. So if we put a bit of volume through this, and we go up to my Dyn Audio Heritage Special speakers behind me and put the microphone near it. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a tiniest bit of buzz. It's not much though. And for a tube amplifier, that is very respectable indeed. And actually I've done the same test with my Klipsch Cornwall 3s behind me. Um, and obviously they're much more sensitive speakers than these Dyn Audio Heritage Specials. And again, the amount of buzz that you get from it is negligible. Um, the noise from the tubes is very well controlled. And actually the noise in general from this amplifier is very low. You can sense it has a very quiet noise floor, which again, it just speaks to the quality of engineering and the thought that's gone into it, which is very high quality. And it's, you know, it should be, right? It's an expensive amplifier. This is not something you would go and buy from Best Buy or down Tesco's. This is something you buy knowing that you're gonna get a quality, quality product. So what does it sound like? Let's get to the rub, okay? So I'm gonna talk about the sound through the internal DAC and also the sound through um, my Terminator DAC, the Denifrips Terminator. From the internal DAC, things are definitely quite romantic, slightly beautified if you like. Now I like that, I, I like it when sometimes the edges are rounded off just a little bit, but leaving enough grain and enough texture to really get under the skin of music and, and enjoy it. This, this does maybe, you know, a little bit of Vaselining, you know that kind of idea that when in the old days they used to do um, Feel old, old, oldie, worldy, oldie, daisy sort of films, and they put like a bit of Vaseline on the lens to give it that romantic effect. That's kind of what this does. Not loads, it's just a smidge, and it does lean again a smidge warm, but there's plenty of body. There's lots of um, kind of sinew and blood and kind of meatiness to this. This is a full fat steak. This isn't uh, a sort of Weight Watchers lean and nasty burger, do you know what I mean? You can really get your teeth stuck into the sound that this outputs. But it's by no means rolled off. You certainly get high highs through this dual mono, mono Wolfson DAC and you get low lows. You don't get thumping bass to the point where it's gonna rumble your room, but it's very satisfying for what is there. But the most impressive thing here with the dual mono Wolfson DAC and the synthesis uh, tubes all working in, in harmony and unison is the sound stage. Oh my goodness me. This is the best, deepest, most 3D sound stage I have ever had in this room in Small Room Audio. I've had some really high-end DACs, I've had some really high-end equipment from, you know, amplifiers through to, well, just, just, this is the best. This is the best I've heard. It's just so 3D. Uh, it's quite an experience. It's almost like you've set up a full 5.1 surround sound system, but it's not. It's just the same speakers that I'm using, which are very good speakers, by the way, Dyn Audio uh, Heritage Specials. We will do a review of those because they are stonking as well. But, you know, coming back to this, this is phenomenal for soundstage. You pick things up in layers from front to back, probably at least three or four separate layers in front of you. Things go all the way around to the sides of your head. They kind of feel like they're slightly above you and behind you. And this is in a small listening room, which isn't particularly good for that sort of setup. But it, this does it, this creates it, and it is so addictive. It is so, so addictive. And yeah, I was, I fell in love with that. I loved it. It was just so addicting, it really was. Now, equally, the soundstage is very, very good through the Denifrips Terminator, because that is a DAC known to produce a huge atmospheric sound. But what you get through the Terminator, which of course is a much more expensive standalone DAC, is a thumping bass. It is astounding. Almost too much actually for a small room for me, particularly through the Eclipse Cornwall 3 speakers. It was thumping and, as I say, kind of almost like a reverberant in my room because it was so big and bold. And I think maybe a word of warning, if you're going to use a DAC which really tips up the bass like the, the um, Denifrips does, it really digs deep, 
make sure you've got enough bass trapping in your room to just kind of control it and, and work it out. Or, you know, perhaps speakers that don't go um, all the way down. You've just got to control your different um, elements of sound as you as you roll through it. Oh, hello. If you come to look at the, this as well, you won't burn yourself on this, Shumi. Um, we'll try not to. It's not quite as hot as the one next to it will be. Right, so if it's not abundantly obvious already, you might have figured out I really, really like the Synthesis A50 Taurus. So much so that I'd say it is vying for position as my favourite ever tube integrated amplifier. My favourite is to my left here, and that is the Line Magnetic 508IA. Now, until I'd heard the Taurus, I hadn't felt there was anything that could touch this for dynamics and just overall texture and emotive power at the same time. Um, but I've got to say, the Taurus, it takes the line magnetic for soundstage by a mile. It really does. It also takes it because it has an inbuilt DAC. The 508IA does not have one. Neither has an inbuilt uh, phono stage either, so it's probably worth mentioning that. But the 508IA, again, it's not really a fair fight because I've replaced all the tubes here. I have um, some PS Vane 805s, some um, Gold Lion rectifiers, which are 300Bs, two Mullard CV181 um, uh, 6SL7 replacements in the preamp stage and a Mullard um, 6SL7 in the preamp stage there as well. That is probably, ooh, I don't know, about £2,000 worth of glass. So actually, when you put that together with the retail price of the 508IA, comes in at around the same as the Synthesis A50. So we are looking at like-for-like -like cost comparison once we've mucked around with the tubes. But we have different bits for each, which are wonderful. Over here, soundstage, over here, probably takes it on bass and also dynamics, but over here we have mid-range magic, which is better for vocalists than the synthesis. That's probably the only area really that I'd say the 508IA takes it over the synthesis. Looks, build quality, sound is probably better with the synthesis. Certainly this is noisier through um, both the hum from the transformers and the sound through the speakers. It is a noisier amp overall, but they're both excellent. I mean, if you picked either of these, you are going to be absolutely chuffed and both of them can drive most speakers that you throw at them uh, with ease. There's 50 watts of power, plenty of current. They're both fantastic. Um, which would I pick? Well, it depends what you like to listen to music wise. If I was going for rock and pop and most genres, probably the synthesis, but if I was going for vocalist, choral music, I would probably pick the Line Magnetic 508IA. It also has what I call the magic switch over here on the Line Magnetic. It has an NFB setting, which essentially changes the sound to be more romantic or less romantic, more incisive and dynamic or less and more woolly and sort of, you know, cuddly and nice. And that's really cool to have that in an amplifier because you can tune it to taste. We will be looking at tube rolling and the line magnetic in its own review uh, at some point on some on small room audio. But for today, for comparison purposes, I have to tell you this Italian amplifier over here is blooming wonderful. If you get a chance to listen to it, please do. You are really missing out if you haven't listened to this. Um, I would I would love to keep it, but I think um, I'd have to be saving my pennies. But if I did, I think it is a worthy investment for them because frankly, it's it's really captured my imagination like many things Italian do. And yeah, absolutely loved it. I'm gonna stop raving about it now. Do you love it too, Shumi? Yeah, good. The dog loves it too. It's got the wag seal of approval. Look, if you like this review, if you like what we're doing here, I know we're not the most technical challenged uh, channel out there. I know we have a bit of fun and a bit of silliness now and again, but we are telling you how it is with hi-fi that is both cheap or expensive, whether it's good or it's bad. Today, we're looking at something that's very good. Please do like and subscribe. Stick around for the next one. This is Small Room Audio. Thanks for listening. <laughs>